We have backed Ukraine's fight for their freedom and sovereignty since the start. As the first country in the world to train Ukrainian troops, first in Europe to provide lethal weapons, first to commit tanks, first to provide long-range missiles, and now we're at the forefront of a coalition to equip the Ukrainian Air Force, with Ukrainian pilots starting their training here in just a few weeks' time. Mr Speaker, we do all of this because it's right, because it protects our values and our interests, because it keeps our people and our allies safe, and because, quite simply, it's who we are as a country. In my bilateral meetings and the wider NATO sessions, I was struck again and again by how valued our contribution is. The British people should know that, and they should be proud. The United Kingdom is and will remain one of the world's leading defence powers. We are the leading European contributor to NATO. We were one of the first to hit the 2% target for defence spending, and we're going further. Earlier this year, I announced a significant uplift, an extra £5 billion over the next two years, immediately increasing our defence budget to around 2.25% of GDP, on our way to delivering our new ambition of 2.5% and ensuring that our incredible armed forces can continue to keep us safe. Right now, RAF jets are patrolling NATO's eastern flank. Our troops are on the ground in Estonia and Poland as part of NATO's enhanced forward presence, and the Royal Navy is patrolling the seas, providing a quarter of the Alliance's maritime capability. We're one of the only countries that contributes to every NATO mission, and will keep playing our part as a leading nation in the Joint Expeditionary Force.